Welcome everyone to my talk, Bug Bounty Hunting with AI Agents. I'm really happy that so many people found their way into the small room here. I'm David Übelacker. I'm a software architect I'm working at NRG Informatik AG here in Basel. It's a really small company, but really, really great company. In the meantime, I have more than 20 years experience in software development, mostly web applications, mobile applications. Unfortunately, as you can see on my last name, I'm still struggling with encodings. I always dreamt of being a notorious hacker sitting in the cellar in front of a lot of monitors, hacking really secure systems. But it turned out that I'm a really lousy hacker. That's why I ended up as a Java developer who's writing photos most of the day at least. But nevertheless, some years ago, we wanted to hire a company to do some pen testing on one of our applications. And I got really interested. I wanted to know what are they doing? What are those pen testers doing? So I did some research and found out about bug bounty hunting. And that was the beginning that I started to do some bug bounty hunting as a hobby. In short, bug bounty hunting means that companies pay people, you, me, professionals, for trying to hack their systems, for trying to find security relevant bugs in their applications, their websites, and then they pay them for that. Um, nowadays, it's really easy because there are big platforms out there like HackerOne or Bug Crowd. There's even a Swiss one which is called Bug Bounty CH. And yeah, there you can just register and start to do bug bounty hunting if you want. Everybody in the room, I can really recommend it, it's really fun. And as long as you, you, you stick to the rules they give you in these platforms, that the companies give you, and nothing can happen to you. That's absolutely fine. Perhaps you might want to learn to hack before, so that you're also lucky that you find something. And there, that's why I put some um, cool stuff here on the slide too, uh, like so platforms like Hack the Box or Try Hack Me are platforms where you can train yourself or you can practice hacking. And when it comes to web application, one really important resource is the Open World Wide Application Security Project, the OWASP. Everybody doing web applications should know that resource. There you also find uh, tons of material when it comes to security of web applications. And nowadays, of course, you can always ask ChatGPT. So, Last year I was at another conference, a developer conference, and everything was about AI, right? Everybody, most of the talks are large language model, AI, AI, AI. And then I thought, well, I'm not doing this on a daily basis. My normal work has nothing to do with AI, I can't use it. But I wanted to start using the new tools, the new stuff that is out there, that are out there. So I thought, I need some kind of side project, something I can do by my own to learn all this new stuff. And then I came to the idea that I want to try out if I can create some kind of AI agent which is doing bug bounty hunting for me. And the first thing I did, I just went to ChatGPT and then I entered please hack tesla.com. Um, don't do that, it doesn't work. It will say, no, I can't do that, I'm not allowed to. And you might get mail from OpenAI telling you you're violating their policies and that they, they might um, block your account. So it was clear I need something else, I have to do something by my own. It, I mean, it's that what I wanted to do. So the next thing was the idea to build my own AI agent to do bug bounty hunting. Before we go deeper into that, I wanted to explain, because nobody knows here, of course, what an AI agent is. Now, of course, everybody knows it. The problem is there are so many definitions out there and um, so many ideas. And that's the definition for me. Um, an AI agent is a piece of software using a large language model combined with some tools. And the large language model, model can call those tools repeatedly until itself decides that it has achieved the goal and gives the result back. That's the best definition for me. I don't want to go deeper into this topic, but I just wanted to define it again. What I also needed was some kind of framework I can use because I don't want it to reinvent the wheel. Of course, you can directly use the, all the APIs of the large language models, but there are tools out there, really great tools out there. And one of the most popular ones is Langchain. That's the one I used. It's an abstraction framework 
for all the APIs of large language models, but also for other tools you might need to use or want to use when you build an application with large language models. And the second thing is LangGraph. It's a small project which came out of LangChain, which uh, can be used, or it's a workflow engine you can use to build AI agent workflows. Uh, those frameworks are written in Python, and you can use them with Python, but there are also versions for JavaScript and also one for Java. The Java one is LangChain 4J. There was also a talk this morning from Lisa Ray. Uh, if you didn't listen to that one, I can really recommend that one. So finally, what I needed was some kind of target, right? I don't want it to create an agent and directly run it against productive system because you never know what the large language model is going to do. And you might also make errors by yourself. And for that, I used the Juice Shop. It's the most unsecure web application out there you can find. It's provided by Ovas, what I mentioned before. Um, it's a web shop yeah, where you can buy juices. You can download that uh, application to your, to your laptop, start it, and use it for training or for testing security tools. All right, let's get into some code. So the first thing what I did, um, I created a simple agent. And for that, I used create, reagent, uh, create react agent from LangGraph. That's a method you can use to really fast, easily create an AI agent. The only thing you have to pass is uh, some kind of model, the model you want to use. In this case, I used Entropic, Cloud Sonnet. You can, of course, also use OpenAI. But I'm really scared of Sam Altman. That's why I prefer Anthropic. And then you have to provide at least one tool. I provided here um, these request toolkits. It's a collection of methods to do HTTP requests. And for sure, it's the, the minimum you have to pass to the model or to a large language model to uh, do some pen testing, security testing against the target. And the third thing is you have to define a system prompt where you tell the agent what he is for. In this case, you are my personal bug bounty hunting assistant. You will help me find vulnerabilities in web applications. And that's it. That's all you need to create a simple, easy agent that does not only answer a question, but does repeatedly something until it reaches a target. Um, you can start it by passing a user prompt. In this case, I pass try find vulnerabilities in following web application, and I point it to localhost 3000. Uh, as you can see, it's just invoke, and then the user prompt that I pass. And one additional small thing, um, you can configure a recursion limit. That's good because you don't want the agent to run in an endless loop because that would make you poor, I think. The, the default is 25. I had to increase it to 100 so that I get a, a good result. And the second one, I pass as a callback just to get some output. So before I start this agent, I will start the juice shop. I'm using Docker for that. That's the easiest way to do it. And now it runs on localhost. All right, this is the juice shop I mentioned before. Then there is a scoreboard, a hidden scoreboard. If you open it, there comes some confetti because you solved the first challenge. And uh, you have an overview of all challenges, meaning all the problems this juice shop ha has and all the challenges you can solve. In total, it's 172. And now I will run my small agent here. And let's see what happens. On the left side, you see the logs of the shop on the right head, on the right side the the logs of my agent and in the background the juice shop the scoreboard and you have already seen some confetti this means it solved another challenge by itself and another one great right already solved four of the 172 it did some it found the error handling has a problem it was able to log in as admin something with password strengths, and so on. We don't have time to wait to the end, right? So that's why I go back to my slides. Another confetti. So at home, <clears throat> in total, this agent run for two and a half minutes. It uh, 
used more than 1 million tokens and this cost me around $3.50 and it was able to solve 11 challenges in total. It's already impressive because the script is really small. It's, uh, I didn't do that much, right? It's only 30 lines of code, but I wanted more. I wanted something better, right? So I came up with the second more complicated agent um, where I did um, created a, where I created a three-phase workflow agent. I divided the whole thing in two phases. The first one is the reconnaissance phase. That's the term you use in security testing when it comes to analysis of the target. So in the first, first phase, you try to find out as much as possible about your target, like the tech stack which is used, which URLs you can uh, reach, and so on. The second phase is the planning phase. And for every phase, I used a special agent. The second agent, the planning agent, takes the result of the analysis and creates a plan to attack the target. So meaning a list of small tasks that we can use afterwards in the execution phase to run the attacks against the target. In the last phase, in the execution phase, we have another agent, a small agent, a bug bounty agent, which executes this task. As you all know, it's always better to be really detailed, to give a large language model a really small task and precise tasks. If you just say, do find everything on this website for me, it will not work. It will just find a bit. Uh, we have seen that before. That's why it's better to split it out into smaller tasks. So unfortunately, the talk is only 20 minutes long, so we can't go into details. We can't go into the code. If you're interested, I did publish it on GitHub. So on the, in the end, you, you, you see the URL to my GitHub uh, repository. If you want to see how it works, you can just have a look at that code. We get directly to the results. This one did run for 73 minutes, a lot longer. It used 21 million tokens, and the whole thing cost me $65. So I think you can imagine the, pres the preparation of this presentation was really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, it solved a little bit more, but it was only 18 challenges. And at that moment, I realized, OK, I'm not going to build my fully automated AI agent running in my cellar 24-7, making money for me. That's not going to work. And somehow, I gave up on this idea, at least. But I also wanted to know what are others doing. Perhaps someone else had exactly the same idea like me, right? And of course. I did some research and all security companies are integrating AI in their tools. We are not going to into details, I don't want to show you all these tools, but I, for, for the end I want to show you one tool I found which is really promising and you might also want to use or you can use in your daily work. And that's Kai, Cybersecurity AI. That's an assistant that works a little bit like, um, it works like the, the assistance we are using for coding, like Cloud Code or Copilot, uh, GitHub Copilot. But it's meant for security testing. It um, is brought by the, or it's, it's, it's implemented by the company Alias Robotics. It's a security company creating or doing security tests of robots. And uh, you can just install it and uh, decide which model you want to use. They have they support a lot of different models. They have built-in security tools you can use for your daily work, and so on and so forth. Yeah, um, we directly well, directly want to show you this tool. Let's go back to my command line. Let's start Kai. It's also written in Python. The application. It's uh, you find it on GitHub. You can install it with pip. Then you get a little, uh, some introductions, some infos how to use it. And you have different comments to configure it. For example, or one thing you have to do is define the agent you want to use. They come with different agents with, uh, for different scenarios and you can also build your own agents. I use the bug bounter, then I choose the model. Again, clouds on it. And now you can just write test and point it to some kind of URL. 
and it will also try, like my simple agent, to find problems on that website. But as it is an assistant, you can speak to him and you can give more detailed instructions. And that's what I'm going to do. As an example, I say, please try to extract the DB schema from localhost 3000. So he should use some kind of attack to find out what's the DB schema of the juice shop. When I start this, you get really nice output. You see what he is doing. He's using command line tools, curl, to, um, to attack or get information about the juice shop. Um, other things, he is doing a net stat, LSOF. He's looking, I think he's also looking for other tools he can use on the command line. Then you see the output, what he is requesting. And the most important thing, um, it shows how much it costs in the bottom. That's something you always should have an eye on. <clears throat> well, I can tell you it worked. So the extraction of the DB schema is one of the challenges. And Kai was able to do that. I don't have enough time to wait until it's, it, it does it, because we never know how much it will take. Uh, I also tried other challenges, and uh, most of them were easy to solve by Kai. It just costs a lot of money. <laughs> All right. That's already almost it. For the end, I just wanted to provide you with some takeaways. The whole thing, as I explained, is really expensive. The problem here is that the large language model needs all this information, right? If we're doing, we're doing security testing against a web application, the LLM needs the source code, the HTML, the CSS files, the JavaScript files, and this all stuff, all this stuff you need to put in the context. And that's why it gets so expensive. And that's also the second problem I, I faced a lot of times, the context limit of the large language models. The big context we put in there, or all this thing we have to put in there, leaded a lot of times to arrows saying me the prompt is too long. What I also have seen is that the models are really different. They behave different. So it makes always sense to test your application with different models. I did the whole thing also with OpenAI. And it behaved completely different. One thing I didn't mention yet is, of course, these large language models are really good in solving the challenges in the juice shop because the juice shop is publicly available and they were trained on the internet and, of course, they know about the, large, uh, about the juice shop. So that's why OpenAI did a request against the juice shop, found out, ah, it's the juice shop, and just gave me a list of all vulnerabilities this tool shop has instead of attacking it. The other thing I think I have shown, it got really easy to run cybersecurity attacks. You don't need any knowledge. You can just use these tools or build your small own agents to attack your software. So it got really easy. And I, I'm sure there will be a big increase in cybersecurity attacks in the coming months, years. And at, for the end, I think we all need to keep up. Large language models are here now. If you like them or not, you need to use them in your daily work. And that is the same thing for security experts. If they want to keep up with the bad hackers, they need also use AI in their daily work. That's it. Thank you very much.